Um, so we're here really to celebrate um, some of your work and you've had a long-standing relationship with Wiltshire Creative and of course the legacy organisations that make up Wiltshire Creative, mm. um, Salisbury Arts Centre, Salisbury Playhouse and Salisbury International Arts Festival. You have had interactions with those three um, organisations uh, over quite a long period of time. So you've selected some work for us to to share and to celebrate so would you be able to give us um a brief in introduction firstly to the piece moving gravity which was presented at salisbury arts center in 2014. right so um the moving gravity uh was something which i really I really wanted to explore some key things. Um, this was a, it was about nature, essentially. I mean, one thing I like about the art center is that around the art center, so because it was an old um, church, uh, the grounds around the church have got these beautiful trees and they're all very rich in their history, uh, you know, uh, and uh, and I was like, I wanted to somehow first pay homage to those trees uh, in some particular way, but also explore and explore them through three avatars. So of course, the concept of an avatar, most people understand within the context of gaming is, you know, or, 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 or some kind of web to uh, interactive software, so like, so like um, you know, maybe Twitter, or you know, you'd have a, you'd have your own kind of character that you want to sort of portray, or if you have your YouTube channel, you you, car you, you create a persona. But an avatar in a game in gaming is is essentially, you know, you go into the game, some kind of you know, um, shoot 'em up game or or detective game or driving game, and you'll have a series of avatars that you can select to, to play. Um, if you're also interested in Dungeons and Dragons, then you'd have a whole kind of complex network of creating characters, which, uh, which then, you know, then you play. And those, those, those characters will have alignments in terms of the way they, they, are, they perform. So are they good, chaotic good? you know are they lawful good are they evil lawful evil and all these kind of different alignments and if you choose one of those alignments then you have to behave with that character in that particular way so it's a very interesting almost like acting um because you have to act out in some ways which behaviors that may not be your own behavior um so i want to so i created three avatars but the other side of an avatar, avatar actually isn't that. That I mean, it's become that. But essentially, an avatar is comes from the term, of a Sanskrit term, which is based around personas of divinity. So, uh, a Vish, um, um, uh, Krishna, I think, is uh, is 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 an avatar of Vishnu. You know, the preserver. You know, life, and and you have these various. You have these various, or you can say that, for example, Jesus was an avatar of of, of uh, Jehovah. You know, so you have these these avatars which are embodiments of a principle or a divinity on Earth. So I took this kind of concept and decided to to create three avatars that were represented representations of myself, but they were digital creations of personas but really had a deep re resonance from my own particular experience uh and then so there was this uh three characters um was uh elijah it was this kind of african ghost divinity white a bit butoesque in the way it's that's part of the buta that i described i was going to explore that that character uh, there was a kind of uh, another character which is Locke Weatherwax who is um, he's hooded he's a hooded guy 
uh, does a lot of martial arts. And that represents a part of my period in my life, which was uh, very interested in hip hop, um, gym, uh, Chinese martial arts. And those of us of my age around sort of 55 will remember Bruce Lee and all the different sort of, you know, that kind of period of time. Um, and so that was that kind of avatar. And then the last one was a robot. And the robot kind of, um, the robot, in some ways, my experience of, of break dancing was, 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 was kind of developed by seeing these two twins who were French called Tick and Top. And they were amazing, uh, amazing kind of um, my mime artists. And the first time I'd seen them on television, I was really young. Uh, I saw them and I was just blown away because they looked like robots. They, you know, the, the way they moved, they, I was like, oh my God, that's right. So I, I just, as you do in kind of street, street parlance, you sort of go home and you just work on it. You work on, I worked it for about three, three weeks, three, four weeks to get it. Then I got it. And then when I went, I didn't tell anybody I was doing it. And then I go out, you know, you're with your mates and you start doing, oh my God, that's amazing. How'd you do that? Oh yeah, yeah, I could just do it in it, you know. So they're like, <laughs> so it's a kind of, um, but they, you know, you, try, you, you hide the fact that you've been sweating away trying to get it right. But, but um, and then of course that, that in some ways got me into performance because of the, the reaction I got was like, wow, what's that, you know? And that was around the same time as break dancing and body popping and. And there was one guy, a cousin of ours, who was living in America. And he'd just come from, he was in the Mark, Malcolm McLaren video, uh, where, which broke break dancing into Britain. He was in the video, but he came over and he was literally a body, I mean, he was properly, I don't think he did anything else. I think he just ate and body popped. That was it. He stayed with us, he stayed with us for about four, about a week. And, and in that time, he taught me a lot of body popping. Because I, I was always into robot. I didn't really know about body popping. He'd come along and just did all this stuff. And I was like, what are you doing? My mom used to say, Olu, what is he doing? He's going to break his bones. What, what kind of... Do and I thought, any kind of movement that makes my, you know, that makes my family go, uh, what is that? I thought, it's got to be good for me. So, uh, so, we, so we did a lot of body popping and we went to um, various places and we just stopped. You put the music on, he'd body pop, and I'd do robotics, and suddenly we had about hundreds of people to come and watch us, you know. And um, and I thought, wow, this is really powerful stuff, and that really got me into performance. So the robot was that, but it's also a cautionary thing of, are we turning into androids? Are we turning into cyborgs? What, what, actually, what is a cyborg? You know, I can't run to London in under three hours. I can't, I can't walk that far, I can't run that fast, but I can drive that fast and get there. In that moment, am I human or cyborg? Because I'm having to rely on, you know, this experience here where I'm talking to you on, the, on my computer at home. And uh, because we have a relationship that's embodied in the first place, we're communicating across what? Wires and resonance and you know there's all sorts of technical magic that's happening which means that there's a relationship with cyborg a symbiosis between technology so the the robot in some ways a cautionary tale of you know that those things are coming into our lives you know where we think oh no no i'm, I'm a human being but yeah if you travel to you know um, to Spain every year, <laughs> you certainly couldn't swim and run to Spain. You have to take, you know, a plane and various digital. You know, often people have their phones with them. I mean, you know, we remember. Oh, I, um, I'm much older than you, but I mean, my my um, I remember when phones were like phones. <laughs> you know, phones, <laughs> phones were. Hello. <laughs> What in the uh, yeah. hair? You know, a phone and you was. Have to arrange to ring a friend. You have to yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, the, yeah, so that you, you know, and then you kick anyone in the house off the phone because I'm yeah. gonna. Someone's ringing me. I've got to ring a friend. It's got to be at this time. Exactly. 
Yeah. Exactly. The, the, yeah. the, the avatars that we will be seeing um, amongst this discussion as well were, were um, it was, it's about being present, that piece of work. Um, yes. They were, the avatars were filmed at the art centre and it was the presentation of the piece was designed for somebody to be present in the space whilst engaging with the digital technology to, to layer it. And there was also some, some photographic stills of those pieces inside the building as well, wasn't there? So it was quite a, it was quite a, a, a full sensory experience for people. Yeah, it, it was. It's, it, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, it was designed so it's it's an it's an immersive installation. Essentially, I would probably call it that. And it was part of the art center's virtual worlds segment exhibition. I was with um, other artists, um, and like you said, you know, there was a sense of presence. There was a sense of. Um, that these were characters that someone, you know, the, if, if a, a businessman would walk in and see the robot, might sort of have a little bit of a kind of, yeah, TikTok in a suit. I'm kind of regimented. I've got this kind of I'm locked into a system, you know. And then, you know, the the hip hop, someone who's got a, you know, there 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 there'll be ways in which demographics and people will begin to relate to them that was one thing but th those weren't the reasons the reasons were because they were aspects of my my life my personality but the the thing was that i wanted to i wanted those virtual characters to engage with very real things and those real things well, one is the, you've got the, there's a museum so you, you know that's the art the art gallery bit where you're seeing these very large pictures of the avatar with all the kind of information and, and the trees there was all the kind of uh, an arrangement with the trees are and the, and the um, QR codes, uh, and then um, and then those. But you then you'd go out into the into the the, the, the garden uh, where all the trees are, and each one of those trees, which related to the QR codes inside, were the QR codes were on the tree, and so and then I placed it in the absolute angle that I filmed the avatar performing. And there's a poem as well, into it. and it has to be experienced in the whole. Table of Light. A dream I had, a dream I say, nothing but a dream were they. To be, they said, to be I could, if nothing but to be was should. Nothing is should, nothing is could, you tree I say, my roots will stay, for nothing to be embodied and free is thought betwixt, then understood. So it was about, it was about situatedness. The piece was located in and for the art center, but at the same time, the presence of my ancestry is, 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 is to be part of that space. But it was funny though, because I was relating a bit earlier that, um, especially within the context of Black Black Lives Matter, uh, there was a, an incident that happened while I was preparing the installation, and it was by the there's a beautiful copper birch tree, uh, which I did, ironically, a, uh, the 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 uh, robot character did a performance around that, uh, and it was just in I think it was just in season, so. It was a uh, springtime, uh, and I'd already asked the council if I could do this because obviously, it was, you know, this is a private land in some ways, uh, and uh, and I wanted to make sure everything was like correct in terms of the correspondences. So I was busy doing that, and then uh, I heard, "Put your weapon down! Put your weapon on the ground! Put your weapon!" And there was this, and I turned round, and there were three policemen. There was one policewoman, two three policemen. Uh, flanking me in this kind of pincer movement, hand in their in their pocket. One of them looked like he had a either I don't know whether it was a taser or a gun, ready to sort of um, you know to a, well to arrest me in some ways, you know. Um, and uh, so I had to, <laughs> had my hammer in the hand. But it did look it um, you know it looked conspicuous. <laughs> Six foot five black man with a hammer in his hand, you know, hammering on a tree. 
So anyway, I put it down and they uh, and they sort of come in closer and they're, and I was, you know, and the thing is that they just saw me as a threat. You know, a hat, it didn't really look like a threat. I didn't think so, but maybe again, this is this where perception comes in. They just saw, they just saw black person, tall, hammer, and just thought he's going to do something bad. Um, and, uh, but anyway, so the, one of the, um, art center, uh, Correspondences came out to me and said, "Oh, no, no, don't worry. He's he's an artist, no big thing." Of course, they were suitably embarrassed, but uh, it was it was an ironic, but also interesting moment because it kind of this thing about trying to create presence. You know, I could just have done one advert avatar or just myself as an artist, but I wanted to present three characters, which on one level are kind of stereotypes, but on other levels, they represent those, those aspects of, of, of African culture and experience that is largely unknown. I mean, unless you have people who know you, you know, or, or, or have African friends or have lived out in, 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 in parts of Africa. You know, so so that was the yeah, so that was the idea. So you're absolutely right. Presence was important. It certainly breaks the, a stereo uh, breaks a stereotype. The work mm. that you're presenting in that time. Thank you. Um,